single seat, you know, one software package to right. deal with for all your people. But also, we can use things with the access system to drive the AC and the lights. We can use card swipes. So if, if nobody's there, we don't need to turn the lights on. best cost solution and, and just integrate them together hence since the systems integrator right yes sir and you guys are also able to put in like lighting controls and access and security and things like that definitely so cool so Brad one of the really cool things you know we talked about single seated control in other words the ability to pull multiple systems in and have one software package talking so show us show us how that looks if you would all right so basically the user interface that's that's the heart of the system because that's what the user that's their interface into the all these controllers. So if it's not intuitive, they're not going to use it. Right. Uh, you don't want it to where you know you need a, a two-week training class to use their front end. So we focus on making intuitive systems that our average training class lasts about 30 minutes, just because it's all right there. You know, everything you would want to know is right there. Right. Um, so this is just a, a graphical demonstration of everything that's on this board. Um, I'm getting a space temp. And then I'm also controlling a generic light from every one of these manufacturers and all these protocols. So I've got LawnWorks, BACnet, TrainCom4, TrainCom3, uh, JCIN2, uh, Fox Protocol, and Modbus Protocol with six, seven different manufacturers. All this is communicating on one system. Uh, I click the light switch and all the lights turn on from all these manufacturers. I'm also reading space temp from all these manufacturers. Wow. So. What we do is we normalize the data. It doesn't matter who made it or what protocol it's t talking. Right. We just bring it in and it's a data point on their front end. Well, show us some pictures of some of the stuff you got here. Yes, sir. All right, so what we have here, this is a mall close by, and this was another integration project. We took an existing, somewhat functional Johnson and Lawn system. It was kind of two separate systems. They had two different workstations, one for the chiller plant and one for the uh, air handlers. So what we did is we combined that all into one system. So we've got two York chillers that we're communicating into with. We've got one train chiller that we're talking back net. And then we've got LawnWorks controllers controlling the pumps and all the air hammers. And all this is under one system. The user wouldn't know who made it or what protocol. It doesn't yeah. matter. It's just data on the screen. Single seated integration. Definitely. Start stopping the chiller we're communicating. So this is a York chiller it's got an N2 interface we're communicating with it we got all the data right here on the graphic that you would have right at the front panel of the chiller so in other words this is live data this is a mall right now this is what the chiller is doing so you you, you right now you're you're uh you can see what kind of voltage you're, you've got coming in the kw Definitely. input that they're using and because that, that's right because energy monitoring has become a really key piece right huge, so huge so this is something else you guys will build into this package as well definitely cool. and also troubleshooting you know instead yeah. of just chiller alarm we can actually see what, what is going on with the chiller so this will actually let you know you, you, you would probably get a call before they even know that the the, the temperatures change definitely right? definitely that's also awesome and then we can qualify it you know is it just a warning or is it a serious issue that we need to, to yeah. deal with here we've got the cooling towers this is the lawn works programmable controller controlling the towers so we had back net and into on the chillers but controlling some of the peripherals of the plant we've got lawn works controllers so here we've got all the data from the drives uh, we're staging and rotating the fans uh, we can see via the little purple background colors that's something that tritium does as you can see point status so i know immediately that that set point has been overridden just by that background color nice so just a really easy user interface so say more about you know you mentioned so they got a line controller doing this and they got uh you know uh back neck controller doing this are, are you saying you're able to sort of pick the best of breed controller for a particular application and integrate it definitely best of breed but also what best matches what they have if yeah. they've already got a back net network there or if they've already got a lawn network there we can just add to it. We're not Way having cool. to run all new data trunks yeah. and, and uh, add other drivers and stuff. We can right. add to what they have. Very cool. And you guys, th these are custom graphics you guys definitely, did, right? Definitely. So you can kind of come in and find out what a, how an owner likes to look at something and then just create a custom set of graphics for them. Definitely. So Brad, one of the things you're probably hearing a lot from your owners and, and your customers, just like we are, is you know this whole concept of green buildings and mm -hmm. lead buildings and 
And, and I think, you know, there, there's a saying, if you can't measure it, you can't control it. So Correct. one of the things that our customers are asking us a ton about is things like sub-metering mm -hmm. and, you know, where you're, where you're metering different loads. But, you know, that's only as good as if you can bring it back to where you can actually see it and understand the information. Tell us a little bit about ST, STS's approach to sub-metering. Um, we feel the energy meter is like your speedometer. You know, if you get pulled over for speeding and your speedometer is broken, you really don't know how to react. Yeah. If your speedometer works, you know exactly what to do. So that energy right. meter is the speedometer of your building. Right. You know whether you're turning too much things on, too many things on. Um, you can see it instantly what the impact is going to be on your energy usage. Right. So it it teaches you a certain behavior, a conservationist behavior, of whoa, I change that to my sequence and look at my energy usage. You know, right. you're not you're not reacting to 30 days later with the bill. You're seeing right. it instantly to all your little uh, operational changes. Cool. Uh, definitely. Here, uh, this is again at the mall. We're, we're doing sub-meters for the tenants and then the property manager bills them on their usage. Oh, so interesting. So yeah. we're using Tritium to monitor the meters, but then we also create a report once a month and email it to them so they can use that for sub-billing. Awesome. So now they really incentivize their tenants to save more money. Correct. <laughs> right. but one of the things we focus on is we do a, we call it report card programming. We focus on the performance of the individual pieces of equipment and the controllers. And we tell you who the worst performers are. So you can focus on that. Is it a mechanical problem? Is it a control problem? Is it a design problem? Uh, when we do our optimization, it's all demand based. So the plants, you know, the VFDs, the towers, the chillers are all ramped up based on a zone demand. Well, if that zone is undersized, you're wasting energy. Yeah. So, so you get back and redesign. We focus on those problem zones and we make them right and then that pays for itself 10 times with the rest of the system. So in this demonstration, I've got maybe 15 or 20 different space temps. I got some free spray here. I'll spray this sensor and not only will I show you the minimum space temp uh, on this whole board, mm -hmm. but I'll call it out who it is. All right, so we see 27 degrees is our minimum space temperature, but that information alone doesn't tell you a whole lot. We tell you exactly where it's coming from. So it's coming from a Honeywell BackNet Spider VAV. Wow. So we also do that with set point deviations. Okay. So min and max temperature, they don't tell the whole story. Right. Um, it's relative based on set point. So we do a calculation of space temperature versus set point, and we come up with an error. Well, we tell you what your worst errors are. Yeah. So if all your errors are less than half a degree, you don't even need to go any farther in the system. If you got an error that's five degrees, that's your problem area. We got to go right to that system yeah. and see what it is. So this is a value add that System Tech Services add add uh, value add for your customers. Definitely. Right? So in other words, and you monthly you will report that or or sort of real time. So if you see something that goes out of deviation, you guys are immediately going, hey, you guys got a problem here. Let's go take a look at this particular piece of equipment, which has got to eliminate a lot of uh, cost. If if you got another contractor that's coming out without this system, right? He's got to go from unit to unit to unit. Right. He's probably not even going to know it unless he checks it. Definitely. And you know, to check something like a mall like that, it just it'd be, be cost prohibitive. Definitely. So building this into the system is a huge, huge thing for for an owner, I would think. I mean, it's part of our base. It's what we put in every system, and. Before, without that, you just wait on people to complain. We talked a little bit about the cycle. So, you know, a building owner comes in, he hires an architect, hires an engineer, they put right. stuff out for bid. Right. You get a uh, control system in, and it's just designed to save you energy and money. Yes. That's not always the case, though, is it? Nope, no. The, you can put the control system on a building, but if the equipment does not perform as designed, it, it's never going to be adequate. So right. the whole system has to function. And, and like I said, we're full service mechanical. We do test and balance. We do controls. So we can take that system, whether it's 30 years old or two years old, and we can put it back into design and make it energy efficient. Well, I think the technical term for this, and this is a trend that is that, that has started is, is recommissioning, right? Yes. So recommissioning, how would you define that? I mean, give me the Wikipedia definition or the, the Brad Hodgkin's definition. I mean, basically, you got to go through every piece of equipment, every system, every subsystem, and make sure it's performing as designed. Right. And that takes a lot of system knowledge, you know, to know what you're looking at, to have the right tools to measure the flows, to do the calculations, and make sure it is performing as designed. Okay. Now, I know system tech services. I mean, you told us at the beginning of the interview, you know, you guys are all about, uh, you know, troubleshooting and retrofitting and upgrading systems. What about recommissioning? Is that one of your... Definitely, yeah. definitely. So not everybody can be a recommissioner. No, you have to have a pretty uh, pretty vast knowledge of the systems you're working on. You need to know how they were designed to work 
and how to, be able, how to be able to put them back into design. So tell me about your guys' approach. So I'm a building owner. I'm not sure whether or not my building, you know, nobody's, I, I just learned this term about recommissioning on right. control trends. Right. And now I'm curious. So I pick up the phone and I call you guys. What happens next? Um, basically, you know, we would do a building audit. You know, we could look and see what you had. Um, if we had our control system in there, that makes it even easier because yeah. it, it does the work for us. But uh, even if it's pneumatic, we can go through each piece of equipment. We can take measurements on it, flows, velocities, and make sure it's performing as it's supposed to. But you guys kind of got a unique approach to it because you were showing me something on your software where your recommissioning, once you sort of get it set up, I mean, it's ongoing from now on, right? You yes. guys are able to monitor it. So show us a bit about how that right. would work. Yeah, we do something called continual commissioning. And we write software that basically... It's like a report card for the building, so we can see who's performing and who's not, who's within design and who's not. A unique feature. So once you get once a guy, once a contractor, a customer comes in and works with you guys, and you put this in, he's right. set. Right. From yeah. now, as long as the building is there, he's going to get constant commissioning, and that's just got to go huge to his energy saving Definitely. long term. So I mean, it's the pertinent information, and we put it right on the home page, so they yeah. see it. You know, if they come in and there's a five degree deviation or there's all of a sudden there's a valve that's 100% right. that didn't used to be, that's a flag. Let's go check that out and see what's happening. So so in other words, it, it is a benefit for you guys. So if somebody comes in and has you do their control system and, and do, you do their maintenance, I mean, you're putting this system in. I mean, this is this is just an added thing, right? It's Definitely. just a benefit. So they're not really, I mean, they're paying for the system, but they just get this as an extra. Yeah. How cool is that? Yeah. So Brad, I can't tell you how much I appreciate you being on Control Talk. For our customers that are looking for you guys, how do they find System Tech Services? Uh, on the web at stsi-fla.com. Well, there you have it. Thank you, Brad, so much for being on Control Talk. Brad Hodgkins from System Tech Services, Orlando, Florida. Thanks, Thank Brad. You, if you need to control it or measure it, Stromquist and Company has a control solution for you. With over $2 million of inventory between our Georgia and Florida locations, an easy-to-use online ordering platform, same-day shipping, and a factory-trained team of controls experts to answer your questions, Stromquist and Company continues in its tradition of offering great service and great products.